If you're looking for success in the vacation rental industry, Heather Bayer and the team at CottageBlogger.com are here to show you that it's entirely within reach. Welcome to Vacation Rental Success, the show that features interviews with industry experts, successful vacation rental owners, and more, all geared toward helping you make it happen. Here's your host, Heather Bayer. Well, hello and welcome to another episode of the Vacation Rental Success Podcast. This is your host, Heather Bayer. And as you are listening to this, if you're you're listening on the day of publication, I'm probably listening to it too because I will be on my way home from Knoxville, Tennessee, um, a good 14-hour drive home, hopefully on a good day. And uh, yeah, so... I shall be listening along with you and uh, hoping I edited out the right bits. So today's episode is part two of my interview with Rick Oster, where Rick is interviewing me. So if you've just come across this podcast for the very first time, and this is the very first one you've listened to, you would probably be wise to go back to VRS 221 and listen to that one first, because that's part one of the interview where my friend Rick turned the tables on me. So instead of me doing all the interviewing, as I have been doing for the last 200 odd episodes, um, he talked to me about my history with the vacation rental industry, where I started, where I am now. And in this episode, he asks me some questions that um, that came to him via some of the members of Matt Landau's Inner Circle. And that's Terry White, um, Melissa from Marco Island Beach Getaways, Matt Elder, um, Michael Hamilton and Sally. And uh, Unfortunately, Sally, I, I didn't catch from Rick where you were from. So I'll make sure that that goes into the show notes. Um, but I'd like to thank you all for the questions that you put forward to Rick to um, to ask me about. And I hope that, that the answers that I give within this episode, you know, show a little bit of an insight into into how I view this industry and and where I think it's going. Um, we then talk about the Vacation Rental Success Summit. And you, I, I've, I've said this before, you are going to hear a lot about VRSS um, because it's sort of all consuming at the moment, as it always is. My son, Mike, puts about a year, well, he puts a year's work into this. Um, Since last year's summit, which was last um, April, he has worked tirelessly into making this a terrific event. I just really admire his his tenacity and, and his passion for making it the best event on the planet. So we do talk a little bit about VRSS. Um, Rick is uh, is actually uh, leading a panel of owners who will be discussing a range of questions that will come from the audience, not not just at the summit, but uh, but audience questions that we're going to be asking um, from you soon. So we'd like to know, you know, what you'd like to ask of the very very experienced owners that are going to be on this panel with uh, with Rick so that's something we'll be uh, we'll be sending out in a broadcast um, fairly shortly we also talk about the vacation rental formula which is the training programs that uh, that Mike and I have have put together and although it's been dormant for a little while uh, we are now picking up on um, uh, producing some really new and exciting training courses that are going to be up and coming very, very soon. And finally, we talk a little bit about AVROA, the Association of Vacation Rental Operators and Affiliates, which is just about to be to go into a big launch. And I hope that you will all come along and join AVROA. This is your trade organization. It's a non-profit association and the the committee is Again, another group of people working tirelessly to create something that has only got good for owners and managers. 
What we're trying to do is to bring owners and managers together under one roof to be able to offer a common voice, a common voice for advocacy, a common voice against the what what we sometimes see as the inconsistencies and unfairness of of some of the OTAs. You know, we, we're going to be addressing all these things. And one of the big features of Abroa is the education platform that we have there. Uh, at the moment, we are just focusing on endorsing some educational resources that we know are out there and that are tried and trusted. And, and we're getting some discounts available um, for those, for Avroa members. But over the course of time, we're going to be producing some webinars. We're going to be creating some custom uh, training materials that will be available free to members of Avroa. So, so we would welcome you to join Avroa and at VRSS, I hope to get together with um, however many Avroa members there, there are there. And we will have just a very informal meeting and get together um, just to say hello and to share some of what Avroa is doing and what we have planned for this year and next. So without further ado, let's move on over to part two of my interview with my friend Rick Oster of Oster Golf Homes. <music> So I'm looking at the clock and thinking maybe we can switch to the IC questions. I asked members of Matt Landau's inner circle if they had questions that they would like me to ask. So if you're up for that. Sure. We've got five members that responded. And first is Terry of Anna Maria Island Beach Rentals. And if you don't know Terry, he's a great guy to know. Very knowledgeable and savvy with the PMS systems that Heather touched on as well. But and he had a great list of questions for you, Heather. I'll try and find one or two that we haven't touched on. But who do you make a habit of following in the business? Who do I follow? Yes. Everybody. <laughs> I, I like to think I know what everybody's doing. So, yeah, quick list. Alan Egan, Antonio Bortolotti, Amy Hynote, uh, Vince Perez, Matt Landau, of, of course, Richard Vaught and Eric Mason. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I love to, I love to network. Um, I love to listen, you know, to, I, I go to every conference I can, um, cause I get so much from the networking. So I'm sure there's, there's people out there that I didn't mention. Um, but, uh, you know, I, you know, I've mentioned Jessica Gillingham. I follow what she's doing in PR because I think she's groundbreaking, um, as a PR for VR person. Um, always, always Andy McNulty and Jessica Vosel for what they've been doing with, um, with copywriting. Um, Tyann Marsink for what she does with um, photography and what she and Alana and Nancy McAleer are doing for... <laughs> Do you want me to keep, keep going on? <laughs> Wonderful. No, that's a fantastic list. And I know some of those folks and can't wait to meet the rest, but... So Melissa from Marco Island Beach Getaway wanted to know more about your podcast and where you get inspiration for your episodes. Um, inspiration comes from absolutely anything, everywhere, you know, a forum post, a blog post, um, something in the news. And, you know, something will pop out as I think, you know, this is really going to be interesting for, for people to, to listen to and, and know about. You know, quite often, it, you know, I, I, I've done this successful owner series over time. I've talked to to um, several owners, and you know, you were one of them. And that that inspiration really is because I'm thinking, wow, they're they're doing something that is that is different, or you know, just something just pops out. I remember yeah. I, I interviewed a a great um, owner called Maria Barbara Lamb, who has properties in. Maine and New Brunswick and and I read something about her and in her bio it said she had a house chicken that, that wore, <laughs> I heard that episode that, that was funny a house chicken that wore a diaper and <laughs> <laughs> that that was really wow I really know this is somebody interesting that I think other people are going to find interesting so I 
you know, and I'm always I'm always open to to suggestions because th there are times when I'm when I'm I can get a little bit stuck and I think, ah, oh, who next? What can I bring that's going yeah. to be interesting next? So I'm always open to suggestions and love to hear from people. Well, that's good to know. Okay, Matt Elder with Ocean Outlook UK asks, what is the biggest mistake you've made? And it, you may have touched on that with buying the buying cheap. One of the biggest mistakes I made, in fact, probably was the biggest because it was a very expensive mistake. Um, and in fact, we, we, we've repeated it, I think, recently. Um, when I was started buying property, when I started to invest in property, I found a piece of land and I thought, well, this is good. I'm going to bar build a house on this beautiful piece of land. And I just happened to live next door to a contractor who said, who owned the piece of land. And he said, I'll build the house for you. And so far, so good. Yeah. So he, he sold me this piece of land, which came with a road. I also owned the road around the lake as well. I didn't do my due diligence and I didn't do my full research and I ended up buying a piece of land on a road that got flooded for two months of every year. Oh my goodness. So when the thaw came, this road was completely underwater and I had no idea. Big mistake when you're paying a lot of money for a piece of land. I think that would qualify as a mistake, yes. I would, I'll go with you on that one. And you scared me because that's what I do is I buy land and build houses from scratch. It's, oh, no. Yeah. But you're right. Well, we bought – and, and then, we, then we bought – we did it again. We bought the piece of land in Exuma um, three or four years ago and just been too scared to buy uh, – to, to build on it, you know, to actually really invest in building on it. I wouldn't say that's a big mistake, but um, we're questioning – how we did that research on buying that land that that mm -hmm. was that that was buying on impulse good advice so you know it's it to do do the due diligence with everything no that's that's great advice it is to slow down and not be impulsive in those major decisions okay michael h from live swell really cool concept with beach surf type accommodations he's, he's been on the podcast twice now <laughs> oh has he yeah. okay i'll have to go back and find his because yeah I'm he does the really good um you know we've we, we discussed investment with with michael right yes okay I, I think i did see one of those okay so he wants to know why did you leave your career as a hypnotist and there are there any transferable skill sets Oh, there's definitely transferable skill sets because I've, you know, you and I and I wrote um, an ebook, hypnotic techniques for copywriting. And so, you know, there are definitely transferable skill sets. Um, why I left that was because I got burnt out. Basically, it was psychotherapy and hypnotherapy is is a tough field to be in, and I just I I remember one day I, it was just. Ah, oh, I had enough of this as I, as I sat there wanting to tell somebody to pull themselves together and thinking that ah, that is not <laughs> the approach to take to somebody with deep seated psychological problems. And I, got so be, a, and I got out very quickly after that, but I can, so, I still do, you know, I, I can still do some, some good tricks. Well, I think to kick off the RSS, in addition to the picture of Mike in his Mountie uniform, you should hypnotize Matt Landau. <laughs> <laughs> to do what? <laughs> <laughs> well, we can chat about that over yes, a glass we'll, we'll, of wine. We'll, we'll take that off the recording, shall we? <laughs> yes. <laughs> the post-hypnotic suggestion that we've decided <laughs> from Matt. <laughs> okay, and Sally, uh, one of my favorite Inner Circle members from Casa Mar Azul, asked about uh, guest expectations and how they've changed and what are the trends if you look to the future of guest expectations and desires? Well, I think, you know, look, looking back over, over these years, um, we, we're seeing big generation changes. So when I first started out, the people that were going to rentals were coming from camping. They were just happy to have four walls, an inside toilet, and if they got a TV with a pair of rabbit ears, they were ecstatic. So they were much easier to please. You know, fast forward to today when our, 
our guests have experienced they've they've experienced high end resorts they've experienced um all inclusives not lifting not having to lift a finger for anything coupled with a new generation that is is coming first of all with nobody ever saying no to them which makes for it being difficult sometimes to meet their expectations and also they are less self-reliant much less self-reliant and i think i think that's the, that's the big difference that we're now dealing with people who yeah they 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 have expectations of high-end resort hotel hotel style services in a business that is still basically self-catering that's a great point i haven't even thought of that of the generation of kids and and young adults and their expectations of of being served in a much more extensive way i believe than than older generations yeah this whole issue of expectations is one that's it's been a theme in the last two VRSS conferences. I've I've heard it, you know, whether it's been in the workshops or in presentations or or whether just just in networking and talking to other owners and property managers. I've heard so much about how we we have to adapt to the changing expectations of our guests. Whereas once they, as I just said, they were more self-reliant, they, they did stuff for themselves, and now we always have to be one step ahead of them, anticipating their needs, um, creating experiences for them. I mean, this was, this was never the case. You know, way back 10, 15 years ago, we didn't really have to think about the experiences our guests were going to have. We supplied the best accommodation, the cleanest accommodation, great linens, great mattresses, and they made their own experiences but now we're being told so often that we you know that that the experiences are really what we have more control of now that the OTAs are taking control of just about everything else and we're only going to be remembered by our guests through these experiences so i th- i think it's 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 great when we get when we get together like we have at the past conferences and and have um, have these panels where owners can sit down together and get questions from the audience, get questions that are, uh, are delivered to them beforehand, and and these experienced owners c- can talk about what they are doing to adapt to these changes. You're leading a panel in at the VRSS conference in San Antonio in May, right, Rick? I think so. Yes, I was asked to be on a panel, so I haven't gotten the specifics but that doesn't matter we have plenty of time and so speaking of vrss i am very much looking forward to going again this year last year was my first time attending and, and heather i again you dive into something and do it exceptionally well and i i highly recommend everyone go who haven't tried it and you also do it along with your son mike you want to tell us a little bit about that and how it came about yeah, absolutely. I mean, VRSS started in 2016 as it was an idea that Mike and I had to to bring some education to the Ontario marketplace, uh, you know, to Ontario owners. So we thought we'd just do a one day seminar and get a few owners in there, and um, and and that would be a lot of fun, and and we'd share some knowledge. And then we started talking about it to people, and before we knew it, we had a two day conference with over 100 people and 80% of them were coming from the US and around the world. We only had a very small proportion of, of Ontario owners there. And it, wow. was, it, was, it was amazing. Um, so much so that at the end of it, we, we sat down, in fact, with David Angotti and Matt Landau and we said, what should we do in 2017? And David was adamant, you've got to go to the same venue. It was a, a brilliant venue. As, as you... As you found out because you came yes, I, last uh, last year. Yes, it was such a great venue and it was even more successful with around 160 people and we just had such a good time and the feedback was so amazing. But we'd already decided we wanted to take it into the US to make it um, more accessible for people with within the United States. So uh, and, San Antonio me, it was. So give me the details for people that would like to go. 
um, the date and time and location. So it's um, San Antonio, Texas, one of my favorite places on the planet. And we ha- it's at the Marriott, which is right on the river walk. So if you've never been to San Antonio, you're in for a real treat. Um, it's not right on the main part of the river walk. It's, it's a little bit of a backwater. So it's really, it's just peaceful and, as I say, right on the water. And it's May the 19th and 20th. So it's going to be quite warm but we're going to make sure it's going to be the coolest event on the planet this year. (laughs) I like it. You've ordered good weather, I'm sure. So We've ordered good weather. We've got some fabulous um, speakers. So we're going to be seeing on the the main stage, we're going to be seeing Matt Landau and David Angotti again, and also um, Steve Milo uh, from VR Trip was Vacation Rental Pros. The name just changed this past week. Yeah, just a load of, of speakers, you know, some some who people will recognize, like Mercedes Brennan, um, Andy McNulty and Jessica Vozell, who I've already spoken about as, as people I follow. And I want to just jump in and let listeners know that if if you don't know any of those names, it's OK. Mm. Show up because I happen to know most of the people you mentioned, but... For me, the biggest takeaway was the networking, Heather, and I'm sure you hear that all the time, and just meeting other owners, other property managers that you can mingle with and and network and ask questions. And it's the timing in between the organized events where I found a a lot of value as well. So it's it's definitely worth every penny for sure. Well, as as an organizer, you know, you you get so much pleasure out of – just sitting back and watching people network, you get this this you know, warm and fuzzy feeling that you've actually brought <laughs> all these people together. And everywhere you go, everybody's talking about the same subject. They're all talking about how we can do this business better. And, yes. It's... And, you know, I, I think, you know, people talk about coming away from the event with so many ideas. And I, I always go back to you know, um, the, the very first uh, one we did in 2016. And somebody who's become a really good friend came, and his name is Gary Miller. And Gary is from Ontario. He's one of the few Ontario, I was not owners because he, he didn't own a property when he, he came to the first event. And he'd emailed me beforehand and said, you know, I think this is probably not for me because I, you know, I'm thinking about investing, but I don't even know where I'm going to invest, you know, let alone what to do when I bought it. And I said to him, well, this is absolutely ideal for you. Not only will you learn how to do it, how to do the research and get your get the right investment, but you'll also network with so many amazing people that will help you along the way, not just in that weekend of the event, but for months afterwards if you stay in touch with them. Now, Gary did come, um, and six weeks after that, he had bought his first property here in Ontario. And three weeks after that, he was fully booked for his first summer. Wow! That to me that is, is such just an amazing story. And the you know, and it, as he said that outcome was directly a result of of what he learned and who he met at the summit. And that's just one example. And you can find someone at any point in their vacation rental career, and they'll tell you a similar story. I know that's how I felt. So. Yeah, Go to VRSS. Absolutely. Oh, yes. Please come to VRSS. The other thing I'd like to, to just mention is that a few years ago, Mike and I started a project called the Vacation Rental Formula. And the reason we called it the Vacation Rental Formula was because w- between he and I, we had bought uh, eight properties. And after the first two, after as I was talking about earlier on, we'd ironed out all the glitches. We realized that there was a formula to doing this you know you just rinse and repeat i'm sure you know this rick because yes you have multiple properties of your own i mean you build yours from the ground up but you you found the formula your formula is to have you know they're, they're golf houses you have the every house has multiple queen bedrooms each one with its ensuite bathroom you found the formula to meet the needs of your target audience that's right so, so we took what we figured to be the formula for success, and we, we, we started a, a website 
called the vacationrentalformula.com and, and a membership site. So we started that and we have developed a number of training courses that will meet the needs of people at different stages of this journey. And over time, we're going to continue to add these short courses. And to give you um, a couple of examples, one of those courses is the complete course in hypnotic writing for vacation rentals. So how do you write in that hypnotic way to attract, um, to attract people to book? And another one is on blogging. There is a further one on using Twitter because a lot of people are out there using Twitter, but they're not doing it very well. They're out there just marketing their homes and not engaging. And Twitter is all about engagement. So we have a, a, a full course on being engaged on Twitter. And there's, um, there's, there's nine others at the moment. And there's also a private Facebook group that, uh, that all our VRF members join as well. So it's quite a nice community. So I wanted to put in a little plug for that. Well, that, that fits with your history <laughs> and your personality, Heather, of trying to learn as much as you possibly can yourself. And now you're sharing it with other people. And as an owner or someone starting new in this business, and you know, I mentioned earlier about you have a 25-year career. How can someone accelerate their learning curve, this is the perfect way. And there are ways to fast forward your success and and not go through the pains of trial and error because of people like you who make the information readily available. So I I think that's fantastic. Well, we we enjoy it. Both both Mike and I actually are trained trainers. We've, um, Mike, Mike, of course, is is a qualified, is is a full-time firefighter. uh, And he's, he's also a Part-time Mountie. No, uh, part-time he's the, yes, he's, You're not going to forget that one, are you? He, <laughs> yeah, he's going to chase me down when he sees me at VRSS. <laughs> Maybe I should get him to get the uniform and stand up on the <laughs> stage with it on. <laughs> um, so, 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 yes, we're, we're, both, uh, we're both qualified trainers. It's one of the things that, that I, I get concerned about in this industry is the proliferation of people who are out there um, who've, who've perhaps been in the business six months or a year, mainly doing Airbnb. And they figure that they've discovered the secret to make $100,000 a year very, very easily and without any effort. And they will sell you their course at, you know, quite a high rate of dollars. Right. Um, and people are buying into this stuff. And I, it, it bothers me because there's two issues here. One is these people are not, adult trainers they've they've never learned how to train somebody and how to teach in a professional manner and secondly they haven't been in the business long enough they they just haven't um right. i'm i'm chair of the education committee for avroa which is the um, association of vacation rental operators and affiliates which you will be all hearing lots more about over the next few months of and, course you are <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm part of, well, part of, of the role of the education committee is to look through educational material that's out there and to create a set of standards so that people will know that when they buy into this stuff, they are getting material that really works. Um, so my course is in there as a, um, as a course that's endorsed by Avroa, as is one by Alan Egan as is Matt Landau's Inner Circle, Antonio Bortolotti's um, Fully Booked Rentals course, and a number of other smaller resources. Oh, of course, um, Tyann and Alana's um, VR Mastered Boot Camp. Um, we've heard so many, so much good stuff about that. The names you just mentioned in my mind are Vacation Rental Royalty. So anyone listening, that is a fantastic resource that you can trust. And I'm sure they're fairly priced and well worth the investment. Well, absolutely. We, um, you know, it's it's up to it's up to anyone what they want to invest in their in their learning. My view has always been take what you need and leave the rest. But I, I think we're we're offering some really good balanced stuff in there. I mean, the stuff that Alan Egan is doing with his free websites. And you know, Alan's been giving away these websites for years, and and yeah. now he's. Um, 
you know, he's invested so much into Vacation Soup. And, and I'm, I'm really pleased to see that the results that people are having are just amazing. So, you know, we have no problem in endorsing these courses. And uh, yeah, I just, wanted to, I just wanted to throw that out there about Avroa, what we're doing. And, and I, I just think it's, an, you know, it, it's important in the industry at the moment that we try and weed out the, the wheat from the chaff. I had no idea that effort was underway, but I'm really glad to hear about it. So thanks for sharing that. Yeah, well, th- yeah, we've got some great people, you know, you know, on the committee. We have Alana Schroeder <laughs> and, and Debbie Heatert, Maria Recruit, who comes from Niagara on the lake and does m- magnificent stuff in um, the vacation rental world up here in Ontario. So, yes, as a team, we're doing, you know, so, some some really great work, I think, in um, – in, in sorting through what's out there and making sure we only bring the stuff that's really valuable. Fantastic. Well, is there anything that you thought I was going to ask you that I shouldn't or that now I should? <laughs> no, I, I, I don't think so. I, I think, you know, actually getting me to talk about myself for this long, you, you have run, done a fantastic <laughs> job because I'm not that comfortable with doing it. And I just think I've just sort of spilled my guts here. <laughs> <laughs> you have. And I've thoroughly enjoyed it. And I know your listeners will as well, Heather. You're an inspiration to all of us. And I can't wait to see what you do in the next 25 years. So uh, so is that it? Are you, are you done with me now? I am done with you. <laughs> well, I've really enjoyed it. Rick, really hugely in- enjoyed it. And- I felt like I was twisting your arm a little bit, and I know you were nervous going in, but uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it, and I'm going to look forward to listening to it because I can never get enough of, of your advice and your input and your experience, Heather. It's, I knew you were a wonderful person. <laughs> but now I know you even better, so I'm, I'm very happy about that. Well, that's lovely. Thank you for saying that. And I will look forward very much to seeing you in San Antonio in May. I will be there. Well, I'd like to really, really thank um, Rick Oster for taking the time out to, um, to interview me and ask me all those questions and to collect the questions from Matt's Inner Circle members and and to explore so many different aspects of the vacation rental industry. I really do eat, sleep, eat and breathe this stuff day in, day out and love every single minute of it. Um, I hope that came across. And, uh, and of course, if you've got any comments on this or if you'd like to email me directly, you can do so, of course, as ever, either by adding your comments at the end of the show notes or by emailing me directly at heather at cottageblogger.com. And of course, if you're coming to the Vacation Rental Success Summit, then we will meet there. So as I mentioned last week, um, each week now, I'm going to be focusing on one of our sponsors for VRSS. And this week, I'd like to talk about uh, proper insurance. And Darren Pettijohn, who is the principal of uh, proper insurance, uh, I met Darren in person in um, in Chicago back in last September, uh, as he is part of the uh, the committee of um, Avroa, um, the Association of Vacation Rental Operators and Affiliates. He has also been on the podcast, and I'll put a, a link to that episode on the show notes. And it's quite interesting every time I, I go on to you know a, fa- a Facebook group, and there's a question on insurance. Proper insurance pops up just about every time. And the majority of people, in fact, I, I don't think I've, I've heard anybody say anything negative uh, about them. Because, you know, we all have to have vacation rental insurance. It's not enough to rely on the, uh, the standard home insurance policy that you have. Um, it may say on that policy that, uh, that, that you are covered for rental, but... Th- you need to check with your broker because in general you'll find that you are covered to rent out the property residentially, which means, you know, um, rentals that be, that come under the landlord-tenant legislation of of your particular area. Vacation rentals are an entirely different thing. 
Um, short-term rental is something that the insurance companies have been, uh, you know, not not too happy with over over the years because basically, in in many places, there hasn't been any regulations or legislation surrounding it. So there is no real control over what happens when a homeowner rents out their property for um, for, for short term purposes. So so companies like Proper Insurance that specialise in vacation rentals are very very useful to to know about. And I know when I've been talking to to Darren that there's some very specific things that you you need to know before you buy a vacation rental property, before you even start to list it for rental. So not, not only do you have to have the insurance in place, but you have to do your due, due diligence to ensure that you, you have not been negligent in any way. And I know in, in our area, up here, up here in Ontario, that we have to, to look at some very specific things with our vacation rental, with our cottage rental owners. When we go and view a property to add it to our property management register, we look at all sorts of things like um, you know, the, the height of decks off the ground and if, if there's sufficient railings and if those railings meet the standard building code. Are our docks safe? Uh, are they slippery? And of course, you know, a dock does get it does get slippery when it gets wet. So we look at how owners are warning their guests about the potential for slipping on a wooden dock, um, slipping off a wooden dock. We don't want our guests to be diving or jumping off a dock into water where there might be submerged logs or submerged rocks. So we have to take care to work with our owners to ensure that their guests are fully informed of anything that might be a a risk for them and for the owners as well. So there are so many things to consider before you start listing your property in terms of um, of liability. And, and that's where a good insurance broker comes in. So we are so happy to have proper insurance at VRSS this year and very happy to have Darren um, giving a presentation on insurance. And he's going to be talking about the general understanding of the vacation rental insurance market and giving some simple takeaways so that you will know that you're covered. Because uh, we we know as a company that it only takes one guest to have a little slip and fall accident and all, all hell breaks loose. You know, all of a sudden we as a company um, are named on a claim, as is the owner, as is the chipmunk that's running around the deck. You know, it's it's whoever happens to be in the area is going to be named in that claim. So <laughs> you've got to be prepared for it and to make sure you have a plan in place, not only to um, to prevent claims from happening in the first place, but to um, to be prepared just in case one comes along. So as I say, we're, we're highly delighted to have um, Proper Insurance as a bronze sponsor of VRSS this year. And I hope you'll come along and talk to Darren at the show and, um, and get some information on how well you're covered and if there's anything else you can do to make your coverage better. So as I'm, as I'm Talking about Darren, I'm actually looking at the agenda for the event and it really looks looking really, really good. There's a few to be decided spots in there. We're still filling the very final speaking slots. Um, but go to vacationrentalsuccesssummit.com and go to the agenda and you can see most of um, of the people who are going to, to be there and, uh, and be part of the event giving the presentations, giving the workshops and the sponsors. So if you haven't got your ticket yet, you can email me at heather at cottageblogger.com and I will give you a special discount code and answer any questions that you may have. So for now, that's it. Next week, I will be in Paris. In fact, I will be just coming back from Paris after the European Vacation Rental Managers Association conference. And the week after that, I will be telling you all about that, what I learnt from the presentations I went to, the people I spoke to, and give you a little bit of a 
of a flavor of um, of my four days in La Belle France. So until then, thank you so much for listening and I'll be with you again very soon. This episode of Vacation Rental Success is over, but don't worry, Heather will be back soon. Want more great resources? Visit cottageblogger.com for tips, tricks, downloads, and strategies to help you achieve profit from your vacation rental business. Oh, 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 oh,